in studio with us from Hospice of the Panhandle, Maria Lawrence. And I can't say that about Margaret any longer. Maria, good morning. Thank good you for coming morning. in. This is your usual co-host day, but this you were too busy. This is my time, but I had a conflict the first hour, so... But yeah. I'm in for the end. It's great to have you with us. You get a, Thank you. a quarter of your regular pay here. Today, That's right. As That's to right. But don't take it out of my pay. Sorry, Bill. You have to share. <laughs> you got to share, Bill. Got to share. Not with Maria. <laughs> and, no, no, oh, no, no. Let, before we go any farther with Maria, hospice uh, uh, Hollywood night slash well, Don't go there just yet. Don't go there just yet. I was going to talk to Maria. We're going to go there. Okay, fine. We're going to okay. go there. <laughs> I, this is I'm typical, duly chastised. This is typical of Margaret. I am told what I can say and cannot say. He has that mute button, and he turns me off at a moment's notice. I didn't know that was a possibility, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> she would like to carry her Come own on, Margaret. mute button with her. Margaret Cogswell, formerly the CEO of Hospice. Good morning, Good Margaret. morning, Rob. Glad to have, be here again. How's so, retirement treating you? Well, I'm on day three. It seems to be fine so far. Yeah, so. I, no, that's good. <laughs> I haven't created any new problems at home, and my husband was glad that I had something to do this morning. So, <laughs> Now, Bill, you may go forth yeah. with your Maria Lawrence. My program. Maria Lawrence story was, uh, and I've forgotten where I was going with this. <laughs> it was just and, a minute ago. Yeah, it's, yeah I know. <laughs> Hollywood <laughs> night. Hollywood night, I know. But Maria was in her element. She was uh, orchestrating. She was directing. And I'm saying this in a good manner, not a bad manner. We, uh, uh, Maria was, uh, uh, was a joy and delight to watch uh, last Friday night as she was orchestrating everything. That, that's, that's my job, Bill. Yeah, yeah. That's my job. But let me... And now we know why Maria works out by the way. It's for the Hollywood nights. Yeah. It's 364 <laughs> days of grueling workouts yeah. to prepare for what she does during the live auction. Yeah. I was jumping nights. around. And you was were it? like Richard Simmons. Remember <laughs> Richard Simmons? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, I you do. You were Richard Simmons. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. My daughter actually sent me a video yesterday of a guy working out with the leg warmers from a song from the eighties <laughs> was a TikTok, mm -hmm. and she was like is this what you look like and i was like well not exactly like that but i did wear leg warmers and yes it was yes, close sorry. yeah yeah well hey uh congratulations you thank were you thank you it was i was good i was like two feet from you, you were watching i mean you almost hit me with a couple of your back swings a few times that's how close i was to you we were all ducking on the first i'm time. sorry about that I'm well, you sorry were swinging about that. from room to room that because it was, it's set up because you're in you're in the main room right and then and then the main room's pretty big and, it is but then you've got a room behind you and then you've right. got a wing outside just outside the main room and right. you're responsible for finding all three spaces right 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 so um what we did do just for some background for people um hollywood nights is our annual gala um, huge huge support from the community and we ended up we think with over 300 people there um, with the and the capacity of the Bavarian is about 230 so um, our host David awesome who is also one of our board members um, was a little nervous um, but we did it we managed and um, but the, the space we manage during an auction time with um, what we call spotters. So you don't have an individual paddle, but you have people in all those locations who um, tell you if there's a great big bid somewhere. And there were. There oh, were there great were. big bids. So Margaret, I, I got to say, uh, as, as a person who was on her last night of work, that night it had to be heartwarming to see that kind of a turnout uh, your oh final my gosh. day I, for years going to this event um, my reflection for weeks beforehand is that i'm going to see a group of hundreds of people who really are passionate about the same thing i'm passionate about and that's making sure that there's really good care for people at the end of life and so um, what could be better than spending time with 300 people um, that are like that and then also taking home some of their money? Yes, so. not, that's not just some, but a lot of it. Because <laughs> hey, we are still creating um, more and more things that we can do um, to benefit our patients and families. And that's what the ultimate goal is out of that whole event. 37 years you served in your position? 36. Well, it depends on how far you want to go back. So Hospice of the Panhandle was founded in 1980. Um, I took volunteer training in 81. I was a volunteer, their volunteer, volunteer coordinator. I was on the board, Bill, before you were on the board. 
And then um, the executive director, a part-time executive director, Mary Jo Gibbs, was uh, finished her degree at Shepherd in social work, decided to go home to Mississippi. And there was a new licensure law, so West Virginia legislature were very um, forward-thinking, put a licensure law in before many states did. But they said that a nurse had to be in charge of the plan of care, even if all you had were volunteers. So we had a bunch of volunteers. They needed a nurse. I was doing oncology nursing at the time. They said, do you want a job? And I was like, well, I wasn't looking for a job. But um, I thought, I'm going to try it. And uh, if it doesn't work out, I'll go back to nursing. So in 87, I became their first full-time CEO. And things have changed a little bit since then. So how did you get through... I think you did about a three, four, five minute speech there at one point. Yes. How did you get through that without choking? It was up three. I only allowed three. That's right. Yeah, I remember Marie. It was very disciplinary. I think it was five. How did you yeah, not? But, <laughs> which was really good for me. Um, I don't know. Staying sort of focused on that. I. It, it is such a mix of emotions um, uh, in making this transition. Um, I am happy uh, to turn it over to somebody else. I, I really feel like the changes that are coming in healthcare, um, both in the way that it's structured and particularly in the way it's reimbursed, is going to have an, an, an incredible impact on hospices across the country and our hospice as well. And I wanted to give the new CEO a long runway um, to get his or her feet underneath them, um, to really understand um, this program and how we operate so that they'd be ready to weather that storm. Um, so that made a lot of sense in the mm -hmm. timing. I always thought I'd retire when I was 65. I'll be 65 in October um, of this year, just sort of aligned. And then the board did, uh, you know, this fabulous search. Um, they actually <clears throat> looked at like 100 people who applied for the position. And as our board chair, Reverend G.T. Schramm, says, and we came back home and promoted our chief clinical officer, Nikki Vigerelli. And I think the thing I wanted most in my successor was somebody who was passionate about the care. And they absolutely have that in Nikki. And I've been watching her over the last couple of months as we've been doing this transition. And she makes really solid decisions. She's really interested in doing this care right, and I don't think they could have picked a better person. So I'm very excited about that process. In the 36 years or so, Margaret, you have uh, uh, made major accomplishments. You're leaving, leaving a phenomenal legacy behind. Thank you. But you're carrying that to the very end. Uh, probably after 36, 37 years, the most difficult thing you, you had to do was step away, step aside. Mm -hmm. And that's not an easy task. Uh, but once the, uh, your successor was identified, guide her, her feet under her, you did just that. You stepped away. And I think you deserve phenomenal credit and uh, the organization great admiration for the courage you the way you did it. It was professional in every regard. Thank you, Bill. I, yeah. I appreciate that. I'm, um, it helps to have confidence yeah. in the next person. Um, I don't find myself questioning her decisions, and uh, I find uh, that commitment that's there. Um, so I don't know. Right now, I just feel like I took a week off on vacation. <laughs> like, if you had me on really, this show, you're here today. yes, exactly. Uh, have me on this show a month from now, and, and we'll see how how it is um, at that point in time. I mean, this program in particular, hospice in general and healthcare in general will always be a passion of mine and this program will be a passion of mine and I, I probably will be doing something in the future um, there whether that's sitting at the inpatient facility or um, some other volunteer role but um, I'm going to step away for a while and let the new people lead um, they're in a good position we have a strong board um, we have strong support from the community we have a fabulous development director. So, um, Who's not leaving quite yet. Yes. So, yeah. That would be so, you, Maria. Yeah, 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 that would be me. You know, I want to go out on top, and I think, uh, you know, I think I got to do that. So one of the things that I told um, our staff on Monday morning, and I think Margaret really, um, you know, really echoed these words, is 
that the the reason that the community supports us and she asked me when we came in what it looked like how much money we had raised for that event and i think when it's all said and done it'll be about two hundred and thirty thousand dollars um the vast majority sponsorships but a lot of good auction uh action too um but what what i told the team on monday morning is it starts with the care i mean the reason people support is because all you have to do is look around that room or talk to people who were in that room and somebody would say, you took care of my mom or dad or sister or brother 10 years ago, 20 years ago, five months ago. Um, and I think that that's what, it all starts with the care. Um, a number of years ago, and I've shared this with Margaret a bunch of times, um, I actually worked in Jefferson County Schools and saw a speaker at one point who was a marketing guru for school systems. And um, I'll never forget his words because he, he said, this is how you have to be a successful marketer. He said, you do a good job, you do a good job, you do a good job, and you tell people about it. And I think that sort of summarizes what we do, but then we also ask them to support us as right. well. And um, as Bill is well aware, I'm pretty fearless when it comes to asking for support. So well, there's that. The uh, the fr uh, Hollywood Nights is one reflection of support, but we also have a huge cadre of volunteers oh my gosh. that work through the years. Right. Yeah. But yeah. But you see it in all kinds of ways. You know, when we decided to take, you know, we have a legacy in this organization of always looking for the next thing to do. So we became licensed, then we became Medicare certified, and then we grew in and added Hampshire County, and then we added chaplains. And then we just have this really long list of always looking for what more we should do as an organization. And, and palliative care. And palliative care is our latest addition to that set of services. But when we went to build our inpatient facility in our new office building, both counties came together to work through some complex things because they also wanted to support us. So there are many, many ways that this nonprofit hospice here has gained support, our legislators, over the years. It is certainly the funds to be able to do the work, but it is so many more things, too. I'm going to tell a quick story with the inpatient facility, uh, and uh, it's one of the real gems or jewels around. Mm -hmm. If you have not been there, if you've had a loved one there, you, you really appreciate it. If you've just walked through, you have some appreciation. As you're considering building this, I was county commissioner at the time. You came to me and asked me what I thought. And I said, I think it's a lousy idea because we have <laughs> other other places that would cover this. To your credit, uh, you went back and did gathered a lot of data and you were able to support your concept and came back to me and there may have been other doubters as well. I don't know. But it was uh I was totally wrong. You were right in every regard. It is one of the real needs in this community. So it's a day for the ages when Bill says I was wrong. No, I say that. I, I, unfortunately, I have to say that quite frequently. Yeah. So that took 36, 36 years in the making, basically, is what, what that was? No, they, uh, the uh, inpatient facility, what, back in 2007, 2008, 2010? We opened in 14, yeah. 14, we started okay. our uh, yeah. decision-making in 2008, yeah. Okay. yeah. Nine years mm -hmm. in the making, decision-making in eight, so that's 15. So I can expect... You just say the same thing to me in 2038. Not on there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in private, but not on there. <laughs> the uh, the auction items, there was a new one this year. Uh, new York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap put up the name of a character to the highest bidder. He did. And I felt for John was sitting with me at uh, Bill's table. And by the way, Bill was inside this year, and he didn't complain once about his table location. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I complained there, a little bit. A long, but we made it happen. We made it happen. There's a long story behind that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Bill, in the past, had, was actually located at Shenandoah University yeah. with his table. <laughs> if not, if about not half far. an hour away. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> had a remote feed into the auction. But uh, Mr. Gilstrap put up a character, and at first it went a little slowly. And I was concerned for John. I was thinking, oh, my goodness, this would be like a worst night 
nightmare. You offer this up and nobody bids on it. But then it started going, and Mike Hornby got involved, Mike Kite got involved, Jason Barrett got involved. Then it became everybody a wanted war. to be a villain. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, and then Height yeah. eventually won the uh, the bid. But it was funny watching Barrett and Height bid against each other. They were in separate rooms, so they could not see each other. Mm-hmm. But uh, when one raised the bid, the other one was very quick in following himself. That turned out to be a very fun experience. Though. It really did, and you know, and that's the thing. We did have fourteen items, which is a lot of items for live auction. Um, but again, people wanted to wanted to contribute. We have some items that have come year after year, but the the naming of the villain was new. Um, we had uh, a Christmas brunch at. Diana Gantz home um, for uh, 16 people. We had a lot of items that were for large groups. Jim Whitaker and the airport authority um, are doing a tent. Well, we're calling it a chalet um, out at the airport for Mm -hmm. 30 people on one of the days of the air show. And then Joy and Eric Lewis, again, great supporters. They have a barn outside of Shepherdstown and they do a kind of a farm to table. They're calling it Appalachian barbecue, um, uh, that evening as well. Joanne so, Wadsworth and David. With that's them. right. They, they put up their house. Rob has stayed there. Um, it's a beautiful place in, in deep Creek. And we had a switcheroo toward the end of the when we were just getting the program together we had had a dinner that was going to be given by a certain person and then that had to change out and so i pulled my son in who loves to cook um excellent yeah (laughs) who um is doing this dinner for eight um and i think uh chris janelle is uh, and his group is uh bid on that event so and um, one of the uh, optional items was a, uh, a, j- a jury piece, very nice. Yes, and yes, that yes. And w- that unfortunate because of these double rooms, uh, two people actually won, but they did not realize the time. Yeah. Uh, so Chris Kane decided they would he would make another a second piece, a second piece and piece, we're which, yeah. we're still working on yeah. that because um, the bidder on the second piece actually decided that she wanted a, a different color of the yeah. gold and. Um, and it all works out. Yeah. It all works out. So, um, so yeah. So it was a really good night. Margaret, what's next for you? Well, I'm taking a little time off. Seems my uh, family's going to keep me busy for uh, a little while. I've got a sister who's moving. I've got a daughter who's moving. I've got a son that's getting married. Oh, congratulations! Um, yeah, and uh, so I'm hoping just to to step back. I said I wasn't going to volunteer for anything for six months, and I already signed up for two new things at church and something else. I sit on the Bank of Charlestown's board, so a couple more uh, meetings there. So um, I'm not doing so well at no, you're doing... toeing the line here about <laughs> you're the like... you're the worst retired relaxing person I've ever met. <laughs> oh my gosh! And this is day three, so. Um, so we'll see. Um, and my husband is uh, working on a business plan. Uh, it's called Gotta Bake. Uh, as Maria knows, I love to bake. Um, I think that this is a really simple thing where I continue to bake for my neighbors. And he's got a whole business plan that's uh, and a domain name and everything else. So we'll see who wins that. What's your domain name? Uh, Gotta Bake. Oh, that's going to be it. Like, Gotta mm-hmm. Bake. What do you like to yeah. bake? Uh, everything everything yeah so i decided my last month at the office every monday i would bring something to work so one monday it was carrot cake uh, cupcakes with a cream cinnamon cream cheese icing which went over very well and what was it carrot cake or was it coconut cake margaret bill can you tell the difference that is a real question <laughs> that will go down with the annals of history which is which I've got some educating to do, I see, here. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's a story there. Let me just say that the staff who works upstairs probably put on, um, you know, five to seven pounds because of that last month that Margaret <laughs> was there because there was just like a new baked good every uh, – it felt like every day, but mm-hmm. I guess it was every Monday. But, okay, so here's the funny thing because Margaret is Margaret. She would put a copy of the recipe right next to it. 
like any of us, we're going to go and then make a copy of the recipe and try the thing. Come on, man. She was, you know, she was bringing it in. Why would we do that on our own? So um, it was pretty wonderful. And there's a whole stack of recipes still sitting there. I don't know that anybody oh, memories made copies of. of. Yeah, yeah, Mondays exactly. with Margaret. Yeah. Maybe so that's what you memories. can do. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be nice? You can come back and and do a baked good every Every Monday, Mondays with Margaret. <laughs> yes. <laughs> let me let me circle. Just back. volunteered her for another thing. Let me yeah. circle back real quick to Hollywood Nights. We've given a lot of credit to folks like Maria and Margaret, but we cannot forget the very end. They did a magnificent job mm -hmm. this year Absolutely. and every year hosting this huge, huge event. And and um, again, as you're well aware, David Awesome sits on our board. He chairs our fundraising committee. So, um, and if you saw him throughout the night. He was acting as a waiter. At diff he can't turn off the hospitality piece, um, which is why we love the location, um, love the awesome family. Um, back when we were building the inpatient facility, they came on early on and, um, and made a great big pledge to, um, to our building campaign. And they have just been... Um, with us, uh, Irwin and Carol, and then of course David and Christian and and um, and their wives. Ha Everybody has a part. David's wife did all the centerpieces, so it was pretty cool. Were your pretty fundraising cool. numbers back to pre-COVID days, or are you still climbing back to that level? The fundraising number, oh yeah, yeah, we're in exceeding. Yeah. So this Blown year was away. better than last yeah. year. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've we we have rebounded, and that's really good because. We just keep coming up with new ideas and having being in this place where I'm retiring is giving me a lot of time to reflect and sort of go back and really look at those founding documents. And I look at those things that the those original board members saw um, replacing pain with comfort, um, you know, really doing everything, working on patients goals, not just their physical symptoms. All of those things are still very much embraced by this organization, and we're always looking for that next thing. So expanding our palliative care program. We have 126 patients in our palliative care program today. And that we started have, only a year and a half ago? You know, yeah, 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 about about that. Um, Margaret, we have to break for our uh, final commercial break. 